Good morning, fans, privateer, FX. Coming at you at the European Open here. Just watching that RBA release. What a snoozer. Ozzy has moved three pips. I would say they're cautiously optimistic, whatever that means. Um, talking about higher inflation way down the road. 2020. How laughable is that? Like they know what the inflation is going to be in 2020. Anyway, point is, Aussie hasn't moved. We're 94.5. Couple things on the Oz. Um, it's going to be stops above 11 now, 74.11. And those are probably going to get taken out, but this looks like a fade to me. Even though, as uh, RBC put it this morning on some of their research, iron ore prices are through the roof, uh, and this is holding up the Oz. They're also pointed out this is all just leveraged play. And the average holding period for an iron ore futures is five hours, the lowest in history. Lowest in history, a new record. So people are just speculating in iron ore. There's no one actually uh, holding it or, or managing it. But this iron ore price should uh, help Aussie and has helped Aussie. Um, but the leverage problem in China, repo volume also hit uh, record highs, 3.7 trillion yuan. This shows leverage in the banking system. Uh, this is going to be a problem, and everyone kind of knows it. All the big players know it, and this is why people are kind of quietly short Aussie uh, and wanting to build. So, for me, Aussie's a, a sell-on rally. There will be a little bit of a pop through 11, uh, and you just have to kind of sit there and go, what are we going to do, 21s, 41s? Uh, what are we going to do? 41s, 61s, and 81s. Uh, the point is, we don't think this is going to get above 75.30. So, you, you know, you got to manage uh, your price and your position size. But, Aussie looks like a fade to us. Let's get back to Euro. Looks like we had a 12 point range so far. Oh no. 14 points, amazing. Um, as you can see on this chart, we've had one, two, three, four, five red days, unusual. Uh, and we don't like that heading into a big car crash that we'll call 11508. We've got a lot of derivatives, knockouts. Uh, there will be protection in front, there will be stops through. Uh, there will be a mess down there. But it has to be said, this thing is not bouncing. And today we have German trade, which is probably going to come in pretty soft. Um, so euro still core short is the way. Try and you know, try and get a better and better average, which will give you more and more flexibility going into this 115 level. Um, Pretty straightforward, but never going to be easy. I guarantee you that. These very obvious levels are never easy, always tricky. So we're still core short, and we're trying to be patient. We're not. We're trying to keep the position at a flexible point where we can add through 115, but we can also make some money if we are correct and we don't get above 116.10. Let's take a look at Euro Yen. Indecisive day yesterday. 50 low. Again, this this beckons lower after three big red days in decision. This beckons lower. Watch German trade today. Normally a number that doesn't really move things massively. But if that trade balance decreases, the global macro boys will be like, ooh, less demand for euros. 
etc., etc. What else do we have today? Nothing. Kiwi inflation tonight. RBA gov Governor Lowe speaks tonight. Wow. Looks like another quiet one today on the global macro front. We're watching these German numbers. Basically in... An hour and 20 minutes. Let's have a look at also Euro Aussie. This one looks to me on the precipice as well. Uh, 156.15 was the low yesterday. 156.20 is this low here from June. This is the 200 day we're dancing around. Uh, could be a sneaky way to get short euros if Aussie just sits around and doesn't go down as fast as euro goes down 156.15 could be could be of interest let's look at dollar swiss yesterday we pierced 80 went up to 86 so incredibly boring and hard to trade dollar swiss but looks like we're going to eventually attack this 10070 level might be this week well we still might remain summer markets and this might uh, might happen in September but dollar Swiss looks like it's making a move north what else is out there not too much Kiwi unmoved overnight but we're at the lows you gotta watch the 67 the figure area 12 was the low here on the 19th of July and this low here from the 3rd of July 66.88 below that things open up dramatically this is the China blow up trade I don't think we're going to see that today uh, a lot of people have this on but I'll tell you every chance for a short squeeze really you know short term money got hurt but the big boys who have options on and have much wider stops have not been bothered by this uh, and we'll be adding down through here if we get some sort of leverage blow up in China which sort of kind of feels like that's going to happen uh, which doesn't doesn't really help any of you scientific types but this is my feeling CAD just hanging around at the lows. We talked about Zara yesterday. It did kind of what we thought it would do and, and what we think it's going to do going forward, which is go higher. But this is slow, methodical, kind of boring stuff. Mex did not go higher. Pierced those 1850 lows, but summer markets. I don't need, I don't need to babble any, any much more on this. Uh, focus is obviously euro and euro derivatives could be euro yen could be euro aussie could be euro dollar could be dollar swiss all eyes on 11508 and 115 the figure this will be important for the rest of the week good luck out there people i will talk to you tomorrow